Good day everyone and welcome to our virtual classroom. For our Science Discoveries episode for today, we will be learning face changes. So let's get started. today is face changes. When we say face changes, this is from solid to liquid and liquid to gas. In high altitudes, sunlight turns ice directly into water vapor rather than melting it to water first. This creates ice spikes called penitentes when the sun vaporizes small dimples in the snow's surface. This spiky terrain can grow as tall as 15 feet in some areas. So when we speak about face changes, as you could see here, each pair of transition points in phase change occurs at the same temperature. These occur because a phase transition, we call it phase transition of water, has taken place. Just add what you call heat. And a puddle of water will evaporate into a gas. Loss of heat and water vapor, a gas, will become dew on your grass in the morning. Phase changes are caused by the transfer of what we call thermal energy. This is either a gain or loss of heat, which changes the amount of kinetic energy in the particles of a substance. There are specific transition points when the kinetic energy and intermolecular forces between particles change enough to cause a phase change or a phase shift. So let's explore these transition points from one state to another. So the first one that we have is what we call the transition point between melt solid to liquid which is melting so melting is the process of a solid transforming into a liquid when heat is added so here that means that you're gaining energy the particles kinetic energy increases and they begin to vibrate in place due to the lack of space in their arrangement if enough heat is added the attractive forces between the particles are now not able to hold them together and the substance melts. The temperature at which a given substance melts is what we call the melting point. The next one that we have is what we call the freezing or this is the process of a liquid transforming into a solid when heat is removed. So the difference between melting and freezing, melting is gaining of energy, freezing is losing the energy or being removed. This is the reverse process of melting. As the sample of liquid loses heat, the particles movement slows down. The particles continue to move more and more slowly until the attractive forces between them are strong enough to hold the particles in a fixed position. Transforming a liquid into a solid, the temperature at which a given substance transforms from liquid into a solid is what we call the freezing point, which is the same temperature as the substance melting point. The next one on the transition is what we call your boiling, or some would call this evaporation. So the, vo the boiling point or the boiling is the process of your liquid transforming into gas when heat is added. So that means that it gains energy. As heat is added, the particles in the liquid have greater kinetic energy to escape the liquid phase and become a gas. The temperature at which liquid boils, changing from a liquid into gas, is what we call the boiling point. The next one is what we call the condensation. Condensation is the process of a gas transforming to liquid when heat is removed. 
Hence, this is the reverse process of your boiling. This process occurs when the temperature of the gas is cool enough for the particle to slow down and attract each other, forming a liquid. The temperature at which this phase change occurs is what we call condensation point, which is the same temperature as the substance boiling. So the transition points in phase change equals one another. The difference between these points is whether a substance is gaining energy or is the substance losing its energy. Substance gaining heat and kinetic energy or losing heat and kinetic energy. For example, water freezes at zero degrees. Freezing point is zero degrees, which is also its melting point. How does this happen? When ice at a temperature below zero degrees gets heated, it starts to melt at zero degrees Celsius. When water is above zero degrees Celsius and gets cooled, it freezes at zero degrees Celsius. Hmm. So let's proceed to what we call the heating and cooling curve. So this would happen if we have the transition or the kinetic movement of our substances. So water stays in a liquid state as the temperature and kinetic energy of the molecules increase from zero to 100. This consistency indicates that a large amount of energy is needed to overcome the intermolecular forces between water molecules. Once this energy is reached, molecules can break apart from one another and move at high speed as water transitions into gas. And that will also be the same with melting points and boiling points of your water. So going back to your heating and cooling curve. Scientists can model temperature changes and phase transition over time using heating and cooling curves. Both types of curves show the relationship between the temperature of the substance uh, in the vertical axis in a Cartesian plane and the time that has passed plotted against the horizontal axis. So when we say heating curve, this is the constant heating particles gaining energy phase transitions from solid to gas, while cooling curves are constant cooling particles losing energy phase transition from gas to solid. These curves also have horizontal lines to show the phase transition over time, which will be highlighted here. So this is your heating curves for water. So each select uh, the spots here that we have, like for example, for the solid here, this part here, so during heating, the particles of solid water, which is ice, increase in temperature, kinetic energy, and the space between its molecule until it reaches the transition point where the phase change. So the particle begins to vibrate fast, and then once it's moving to its melting point, then this is the, the point wherein the ice begins to melt and transition to water. So the temperature remains constant here, if you would notice the temperature here so this is increasing and then the temperature remains constant remains constant because the energy absorbed goes into overcoming the intermolecular forces holding atoms together of the solid place together okay solid in place together and then it moves so this phase here this part here will be the liquid so the liquid the kinetic energy and temperature of water which is now a liquid increases until the next phase transition point is being reached so here we have the temperature is as well constant this is the liquid gas phase change and the temperature remains constant because the energy absorbed here once again will be overcoming the intermolecular forces holding the atoms together in molecule of your liquid close together before it turns into your gaseous state so once it reaches the gas Face here, the kinetic energy and temperature of your steam or your gas continue to increase. And if the phase change is not in a closer container, this gas will 
expand away from the heat source. Gas particles in a container moves faster, increasing the number of collision against each other. So this is what we call the heating and cooling curve. So this will be the opposite when it's the cooling curve of water. I don't think I placed it, but yes, the cooling curve of water will be from top to bottom. All right. So let's try what we have learned today. So here, let's practice. Identify what are the letters, uh, what are these letters mean here. So we start with A. When we say A, this is when, this is when the solid, I mean this is your solid phase, that this is when, this is your solid phase. Now here, the G part here, where you would see your broken lines, this is the melting point of this substance. And then, once it has a constant temperature or the temperature doesn't change, a solid is being melted into a liquid and the heat energy is being used to cause this phase change. So the heat energy will be spread out for, to break all the intermolecular forces so there will be no change in temperature. Then from here, from this point, moving up to where your C is, moving up until it reaches H, this is a liquid is being heated and the particles are moving faster and faster until it reaches point H. Point H is the boiling point of this substance. Once it reaches the boiling point, the energy here in point D is being used to transform liquid into gas where the temperature will remain constant as it changes its phase. Then at point E, the gas is being heated where your energy again increases. All right, so that is our phase changes in an 11 minutes time. So I hope that you have learned something. Thank you and see you next time. I hope that you have learned something new today and if you're new to my class, please don't forget to click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell for your attendance today. And as always, as teacher Maria would say, please do live your life to the fullest, learn something new every day, and love one another as how our God loves us. See you next episode for our Science Discovery Series. Bye!